Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Again, this month I am doing the mid-month book bash started by Doris over at Aldi Books, who is a joy and a delight, and she has kittens now. I don't know if you saw. There's definitely vlogs of them now for the mid-month book bash by the time this goes up. But the idea is that it's uh, basically almost like a 24 and 48 readathon. The idea is to read as much as you can within a weekend, but the cheating is built in. So the Friday before and the Monday after, if you want to start early, wrap up some things, you can totally do that. And I am embracing this spirit completely because I'm filming this on Thursday. A couple of reasons for that. Number one, I already have everything set up. May as well do this. And also because I plan on spending this evening editing my Sunday video and getting that completely done. I just filmed it, getting it through editing, captioned everything set so that I can enjoy as much of the weekend as possible for reading. And the timing is perfect for me because I have not done a lot of reading this week and I want to finish some things and feel like I have some forward motion through my TBR and just feel a little bit accomplished and I think I'll be able to do that. Some of the books that I'm currently in the middle of include my second book for the booktube prize, which obviously I can't talk about in any kind of detail, but this is sort of a slump inducing book. It's not bad. It's just boring. It is so boring. I have to prop open my eyelids to get through it. And so finishing that this weekend would be amazing. Then we have The Duke Heist by Erica Ridley. I received this as an advanced copy from Forever Books. Thank you. And it just came out this Tuesday. So I should really be finishing it so I can get a review up in a timely manner. I'm enjoying it. That's not a problem. The problem is that I feel like I have to read my booktube prize book first. And that's a struggle before I can read. Yeah, anyway, so if I can get through this one too, that would be great. And the third book I have on the go is Alt America. This is my current read about fascism. And I haven't read, I think I've only read something like 15 pages because this comes after the other two. And I'm enjoying it so far in the sense that it is well written, it is approachable, and we'll see how the rest of it goes. But so far, so good. And so I'm thinking that my focus this weekend will be finishing those two books and then paying attention to what I start next because as well as my reading went in, fe in January I should say it wasn't as diverse as I would want and it wasn't as thoughtful as I would want in the sense that I didn't read any of the books from my recommendations from friends list I don't think I read any physical books there are things that I would like to get to as a matter of course so this weekend my goals number one 1,000 pages would be amazing 24 hours would also be amazing. We'll see how that goes. These are very would be nice type goals. It's not a must in any means. I'm not going to lose sleep over this. The other thing would be to finish those first two books. That would be great. And also the next book I pick up a recommendations from friendless book. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link down below and um, just basically books my friends have recommended to me that I would keep on meaning to get to and a physical book starting one of those would also be nice, not to mention cozy. I'll always take cozy. And while those are my goals, I reserve the right to change them at any time, as it pleases. If I decide I want to read something else, that's great. Pile of possibilities, etc., etc. So it's time for me to go and do the video thing so I can start fresh and early tomorrow morning. Supermarket Caesar for breakfast. It doesn't look all that great, actually, but it tastes good. It's 9.30, Friday morning, overcast and gray, and I feel kind of overcast and gray myself. I stayed up late to caption my Sunday video, but it's done. So I have the full, full four days to myself here for the book bash. And yeah, so I have a couple of small pots of tea in me. You all leave the most amazing comments. Thank you so much. My problematic fave video just went up and the, oh, it's so interesting, so much to think about, and I'm learning from all of you. So thank you so, so much. So it took me a bit longer to answer back than usual, but that's fine because it was thought provoking and fascinating. So let me show you my notebook for this weekend. I wasn't sure what I was going to do for a theme, but then I remembered that it's actually the Lunar New Year this weekend. So I am using up, I have a bunch of stickers that I was using, oh great, for my New Year's cards. And so I figured I can use a bunch of these. And yeah, and then this is um, washi tape that I used for my New Year's cards as well. It's the year of the in Japanese they say cow. I know some other places they say buffalo or maybe bull or something, but in Japanese it's cow. And 
So I have cows here. I think I'll use the bigger cows for when I finish a book. I have the three books that I'm starting with and what page I'm starting on and my tracking hours and pages and books finished and I'll write my thoughts as we go. And then for washi, which I just messed up, I decided I would pick up colors from those stickers. And of course I have the themed tape. And then a couple of these are also meaningful in a way. Where'd it go? Here it is. So these are, I don't know how well this is going to show up, traditional Japanese toys. And some of them are specifically connected with a new year, like tops. And this is kind of like a badminton type game. And also bamboo, because the three plants that are said to be the strongest in the cold are bamboo, plum blossom, and pine. So that fit. And then the rest, I'm just kind of picking up colors and stuff as we go. So let's get started. Oh, and while I'm here, I want to show you my parlor palm here because, let's see how well you guys can see, this is a frond that is just getting ready to open. Will it focus? Not really. Oh, there we go. You're just going to have to trust me. There's a lot of leaves in there that are getting ready to pop. And I have bad luck in that it always seems to pop open at night. And then I wake up the next morning and it's like, oh, I missed it. So maybe this weekend it'll pop open during the day. We will see. The Australian Open isn't on network TV, but curling is. These are the teams that are competing to be part of the Beijing Winter Olympics. It's a playoff today in the qualifying rounds and the semifinals are tomorrow. The men's game went into an extra end. <sighs> there goes my reading time. So that was women's curling in the morning, men's curling in the afternoon, and the women's game, I could read for the last part of it because it wasn't close. The men's game, though, was mad close. And yeah, so mm, 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 I've read just shy of four hours, 216 pages, I think, and I'm about 50 pages shy of finishing my book two price book. And before I discovered the men's curling, I was hoping to do that tonight, but I'm going to head to bed. I'm going to try and read a little bit before I conk out and worst comes to worst I will finish it off in the morning and then there will be books that I can actually talk about which will be nice. Before anything else, tea. And the frond didn't open overnight. It's, will it focus? It's closer to opening but it hasn't yet. There's hope. Good morning. It's Saturday about 1030 and I have finished my book two prize book, which I'm very, very happy about. And I'm not starting my next one right away. Today I'm going to be concentrating on The Duke Heist by Erica Ridley. Would love to get this finished, get a review in all of the things, but curling's on. This complicates things. It was a good game, but finally I can sit down to read. It's a couple hours later and I am loving this. I wasn't sure I would get along with it at first because it's set up as a romp and uh, there's uh, Chloe. She's the heroine. She is one of a group of orphans that were taken in by the by Baron and they have had very unconventional lives and they're all good at something. There's one for siblings is very good with like training animals, another one with disguises, another one with like um, throwing her voice, sleight of hand kind of stuff. And Chloe's trick is that she's utterly forgettable, that she is able to blend into the woodwork. People can meet her several times and not realize that it's the same person, not because she changes her appearance, but just because she's so unmemorable. But See this duke? 
he remembers her. Her goal is to get a painting back that is rightfully her family's, but uh, the Duke's family's has instead, and uh, it's just, it is wonderful. It he sees Chloe for who she is and she sees him for who he is and that's something neither one of them has had very much in their life and just the way the romance is coming together I'm really really enjoying this is exactly what I needed today but as much as I'm enjoying this I'm still gonna put it down for a bit because yeah the curling's starting up again it's not even, it's not that I am a huge huge curling fan I like curling I watch it every Olympics but there is so little sport on TV right now that I will take whatever I can get. Hummus with carrots and garlic. I finished the Duke Heist and it was just what I needed. And even though it's not perfect, perfect, but like I said, it's just, it was just the thing for today. And the only drawback is that I don't know what I want to read next now because all America doesn't seem like the right thing, but then again, it's late. So I'm just gonna go to bed and see what I feel like reading in the morning. That's a rude way to wake up. We had an earthquake. We had a decent earthquake. It was off the coast of Fukushima. It was a 7.1 magnitude, which doesn't mean anything because nobody was living over where it was 7.1 magnitude, but it was Shindo scale 6 plus, they're saying, in Fukushima, which is nothing to sneeze at. It's not as big as the earthquake 10 years ago, and they say there's no tsunami coming, but um, here in Tokyo, it was a Shindo 3, which is nothing to sneeze at either. Again, not as big as 10 years ago, um, but doors are swinging on their hinges and it was kind of long and um decent chick decent chick enough to make sure that i'm very very awake now um but yeah i'm not going to say too much more because you probably know a lot more than me by this point but um first day's quake there during a vlog that happened it is definitely a black tea kind of morning i have some tea in me now so good morning didn't sleep all that well. Luckily, I didn't feel any aftershocks, but um, still, it was kind of an adrenaline rush when I didn't need one at 11 p.m. And luckily, the news is is that um, only 100 people were injured, which just shows you how deadly tsunamis are and how well Japan is equipped for earthquakes. So, okay. The other thing to keep in mind is that we'll have to be careful for the next week because there's a chance that there will be an earthquake just as big in the next week. And there's also a small chance that it's a foreshock. You know, like aftershock, it's like the opposite, like a foreshock for a bigger earthquake. So luckily we have all of our provisions. We have lots of water. We even have um, dry toilets and stuff. So we're set, we're prepared, but yeah, that's something else to think about this week. As far as reading goes, I can't remember what I said last night, but I ended up picking up something. I just wanted something short and hopefully fun and hopefully kind of silly. And I picked up Geek Bearing Gifts by Millie Tiden. It's the second in the Paranormal Dating Agency series. And the first book was flawed, but I saw a lot of potential. This book, uh, mm, it's not that the romance is bad. It's just that the heroine must be an idiot to not realize that this is her best friend from high school and that there's plot holes and there's things that don't add up or make sense, but I'm still gonna get, it's only 125 pages. And yeah, so I'm just gonna get through it and hope that the third book is better. Let us pray. Another news is Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day in Japan is weird because only women give chocolate to men. And if you're at a company or something, even like all the secretaries and stuff, like any woman, who's in the office is expected to give, it's called giddy choco, which is obligation chocolate, to pretty much every guy in the office. And theoretically, there is a, like, you know how Valentine's Day is kind of a made up holiday to sell stuff? Well, Japan went one step further and they made White Day, which is one month later, March 14th. And that is a day for men to give stuff back to women who gave them things a month earlier. Now, are we surprised that most men, large proportion of men don't do that? But, 
I have a wonderful husband, and so I get him something on Valentine's Day, and he always gets me something on White Day, so it's just a month delay for us it works out, but um, I haven't gotten anything yet. And it's Sunday, so I don't want to go to the big shopping mall because it's going to be packed. So yeah, I want to see what I can find close to home. So today's plan. It's about 9 a.m. now, and 10 a.m. is curling, but it's the men's, so we'll see how that goes. I might be able to read during it. I would love to finish Geek Bearing Gifts and also put some work into Alt America because the impeachment result, second impeachment result just came through and yeah, that's timely. So Alt America and then once the curling is over, I'm going to run out, maybe get some lunch, get some sweets and take the rest of the day from there. And a parlor palm update. We're getting closer. Chocolate. Super excited because my New Yorker came and I got some unexpected translating work and I decided to use the windfall to treat myself to a subscription. I haven't subscribed, well, since the last time I was in the States. It, it's not as expensive as some other weekly magazines, so I will take it and, you know, it's the New Yorker. It's good stuff and um, I'm just excited to have a bit of mail every week. It's just about 9 p.m. The curling was great, especially the women's game and the slight underdogs made it. I'm so happy for them. I really like that team so I'm excited about maybe hopefully watching them in the Olympics in a year's time and I read some, did other things, had to do some shopping so I didn't get all the hours in that I wanted to. In fact today's the worst day so far. I think I'm right now at two and a half hours but uh, so that book, that geek bearing gets, I couldn't, I couldn't, it was bad. It was so bad I couldn't anymore. So I DNF'd at 53 pages, but I still wanted a romance and I wanted something short that I could both start and finish today. And I did. And that was Truth or Dare. And this was a contemporary story. It takes place at a destination wedding in a friend group. There's nine friends who have been best, best friends since uni, and I believed the found family right away. The romance was hot. There were some things that bothered me, especially the way the sex was handled. Like, sex in public bathrooms will never be a thing for me. I don't care how beautiful the hotel is and how semi-private, like, you can lock the door and there's only one stall. Like, I really don't care. Sex in public-ish bath- no, mm -mm. no, no. So there was stuff like that, but Alan's a great writer and I'm looking forward to checking out more of her stuff that will hopefully gel a bit better with me. The good thing about filling my heart with romance is that I'm ready tomorrow to really dive into the nonfiction. Now, it is Monday tomorrow and I do have some things I need to do, real life stuff, some work. I have a translation actually that I need to be working on. So I'm going to try and get as much done as I can in the morning. And then I think I'm going to start maybe my next book two prize book. So I have no idea how tomorrow will go, but that's the tentative plan. Night. What do you think? Today going to be the day? For lunch today, we're going to try a bit of an experiment. I have pasta and sauce. It's in a foil packet and I'm going to be adding veg because I need to clear out my vegetable drawer, shimeji mushrooms, naganegi, long, long, were they Welsh onions, and some spinach plus soybeans. It is 1 p.m. I have the window completely open, not even the flimsy, gauzy, curtain that I normally have on there and it's dark and the way you can tell it's dark is look how much this guy's lighting up even though it's 1 p.m. not a great day for filming sadly it ended up being a bad filming day all day super dark it did clear up like 45 minutes before sunset and I like ran out and I did all of my errands and things and came back and didn't read all that much. But um, important things first, uh, the pasta was okay. It, the bean to pasta ratio wasn't very good. 
because I just put the whole can in because I didn't know what else I could use it for and I didn't want to throw any out. So th there was that, but I think with some tweaking uh, and if I made enough for two people, the, the one can would be great. And yeah, so that was good. And the my parlor palm still hasn't had the frond pop still the same. So I guess you're gonna have to wait until my book two prize vlog. <laughs> As for the reading page wise and hour wise, it didn't match up to what I was hoping for, but that's fine. It was something like 811 pages in a bit over 13 hours, but I finished three books, including one that was zero fun that I was not enjoying that I very much wanted to get through. And another book that uh, was an advanced copy of the Duke Heist that I liked. I'm very glad I got through and, but it was just like the kick I needed plus an extra one for fun. So I'll call that a success. If you'd like to talk about anything that came up in the vlog, any of the books, anything at all, I would love to down in the comments below. As always, you're also free to leave an emoji if that's your style. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.